Well, go ahead and get started. We got some other meetings going on, and we got some members that are here that are going to be presenting some bills that uh, need to get to other meetings. So, at this time, we're going to get started, and I've asked Representative Jackson Hill to say a prayer for us. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we thank you for this day, Lord. Realizing, Father, because of you, we're here. So we give you the praise for it. And now we ask for guidance, we ask for leading, and we ask for your wisdom as we continue to do the business for the people of the state of Georgia. And it's all because of your son, Jesus. Amen. This time we're going to see Chairman Allen Powell. He'll uh, present us uh, House Bill 248. And if you'll read that LC number, we'll be good to go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me be sure this darn telephone's off. I don't want to have that number <laughs> off again. Here, I'll answer for you. Uh, LC 3928-18. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you this morning House Bill 248, this afternoon House Bill 248. To know where we're going, you need to know the history. When we passed this bill originally a few years ago, these were the automated traffic enforcement or the speed cameras in school zones. And the whole intent at that time was to slow these cars down and it has all the criteria that it has to be posted so far in advance for people going into these school zones and all of that. One of the things that we did is since it was in the school zones, uh, we required that the school systems uh, sign the permits, the DOT, asking for the, for the ability to run these school light cameras. What's happened since that time, and we don't know if it's confusion or what it is, but a lot of the school systems have not or will not uh, step up and sign for the permit, the DOT. What this does, this allows your law enforcement that regulates this, and this would be mostly for the streets around schools where they're still in a school zone, but this would allow the uh, local law enforcement officers through their governing authority, whether it be counties or cities, so that they can sign that permit for these school zone cameras with DOT. Quite simple. You've got some folks here that's going to be a lot longer about talking than I am uh, that's in support of this bill. Uh, I think the chiefs are here, and I think the sheriff's association is here. And I will step aside if there's no questions from the committee. Any question? Thank you, Chairman Powell. See any? Uh, we got a list. Uh, Mr. Billy Grugan, Chief Billy Grugan, if you'd like to step up. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Billy Grogan. I'm the chief of police with the Dunwoody Police Department. And I've been there since uh, 2008. I'm also the current co-chair of the Georgia Association of Chiefs of Police Legislative Committee. And I can tell you on uh, in Dunwoody, one of the areas that we get the most complaints is, is speeding in school zones. And so it's a, it's a challenge for most of us uh, because, you know, we lack resources to be able to put someone in every school zone all the time. And so uh, when this bill passed originally, it was uh, kind of a godsend for us to be able to look at this. And so in Dunwoody, uh, we uh, went and did a speed study in our school zones and worked with a, a vendor to secure a uh, contract to do this speed enforcement. But since that time, which has been over a year, uh, DeKalb County has uh, been unwilling to uh, process a speed uh, detection or the automated speed permit for us with the state. Uh, I'm not sure why, but this has caused some serious issues for us, and uh, I guess we're fortunate in some ways that uh, school has been um, uh, virtual for a large, large part of 2020, and so there wasn't the, the uh, threat to the children uh, like it normally would be in a school year, but uh, we know that schools are going to start back soon, and this uh, bill would allow us to be able to go ahead and process a permit with the DOT. Uh, we've seen that there's a real need there based on our data, and uh, we look forward to uh, uh, the passage of this bill. Uh, the last thing I would add would be uh, the 
police department, whether it's a city or a county, is primarily the one primarily responsible for all enforcement around a school system, including all the public roads. And the school system has really no jurisdiction on those roads that we, uh, we enforce the speed on. So with that, I'll open it up to any questions or. Thank you, sir. Do we have any questions? Okay. I don't see any. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks, sir. Next up, we have uh, Chief Gary Yandura. Did I say that right? Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and um, committee members. Um, I, I'd echo what Chief Grogan basically said. Uh, we also did the same study. A little background on us is we start testing companies that provide the service um, to us and the equipment back in January of 2019. Uh, our city council uh, unanimously approved the concept and the laws um, in early 2020. Uh, since that time, we've been reaching out to the Cab School District. Uh, I can't even tell you how many times through the school chief, through the administration, and we've we get no response or we're working on is the answer we usually get. But just to give you an idea of the problems that we had, just one day, we, we've done three or four studies, but just on one day, and this is August of, um, August 27th of 2019, we're just interested in putting these, this equipment at three schools. One private school, which we already have permission from, they dealt with us uh, very expediently. But like I said, the, um, the Cab School District will, will not. Uh, the two DeKalb schools that we're looking at are Cross Keys High School and North Druid Hills Road and Montgomery Elementary School. Just in this one day, we had 2, 000, over 2,000 violations at Cross Keys High School. And we've had some, ex some serious accidents out in front of that school. Uh, Montgomery Elementary School, we had 399 violations in just the one day. It just shows you the uh, problem that we have there and what we're trying to accomplish. So we'd appreciate your pushing of this bill and acceptance too. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Don't see any. All righty. Chief Michael Beller. Thank you, Chairman, community members. My name is Michael Beller. I'm the Assistant Chief for the City of Chambly. I knew we had speeding and other traffic complaints at three out of the five schools <coughs> in the City of Chambly, and we asked the vendor to come in and do a speed study. The school with the worst number of violations was Dresden Elementary, right at Shalford in 85. And we really have a, a, a speeding problem there as people come off the highway and speed right through the school zone for an elementary school. Uh, there's also violations at Shambly High School and at St. Pius X. The Shambly City Council approved a vendor for the automated traffic enforcement safety device program unanimously in December 2019, well before COVID hit. And since that time, I've been unable to get an audience from the DeKalb School Board, any kind of official response from them. I was able to go forward with the program at the private school, and I've actually got a, 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 a working automated track enforcement safety device program there. But that was the, program, that was the school that had the smallest speeding problem. I'm yet unable to deal with the worst problem at Dresden Elementary. This bill under consideration is my best hope of a solution to this problem, and I'm asking for your full support of it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do we have any questions or comments from the, we do? Go ahead, Representative. I have just a comment. Um, Mr. Chairman, it's not lost on me as a representative of DeKalb. Uh, there is a um, common thread from all of you speaking, and certainly it's a concern that you're not getting anywhere uh, with the county on this. And so uh, it appears to just be extraordinarily simple, which is since you all are independent cities, to give you the ability to enforce this because you're not able to get anywhere in your workings with the county, correct? Correct. Simple. Thanks. Anyone else? Well, if we don't have any more, we'll take sir, the motion. Sir, let me add yes, sir. One, one thing real quick. Um, I know we're mostly from the cab, but as I understand it, there are some other school districts and areas that are experiencing the same issue. It's not just isolated to the cab. So. Thank you. Motion to move back. 
We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, the next bill, we're going to go to Senate Bill 60, I believe Senator Thompson, is he? Yeah, we'll go ahead and. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I bring before you Senate Bill 60. We should be off of LC 392813, kind of a straightforward bill. Um, we're s s all we're trying to really do is take the Georgia indemnification process and mirror the federal one for our um, law enforcement and public service individuals, uh, public safety individuals, so they have a heart attack or a stroke in the line of duty that it will be able to apply for this. Um, I've got someone who wants to speak in, on behalf of this, if that's okay with you, Mr. Chairman. Be fine. Mr. Chairman, my name is Michael Shelnett. I represent the Georgia State Firefighters Association and the Georgia Association of Fire Chiefs. And, um, this bill was actually dropped a few years ago by Representative Gravely in the House. It was dropped last year by uh, Senator Thompson. It passed the Senate, and we just didn't push it last summer just because of COVID. Uh, but we fully support the measure and think it's a good, good for Georgia firefighters. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you coming. Any other questions? Number 15. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I did want to just quickly say that uh, if, if, if you know firefighters and, and even law enforcement officers, when they show up to the scene of an uncontrolled accident environment, the stress of that a lot of times uh, is not seen 24 hours. There have been firefighters that have gone back to their home, to their families, after going back to the station, getting out of their turnout gear due to the level of the incident that they had just attended, gone home to their families, and had a heart attack within 24 hours due to what they were experiencing. So, Mr. Chairman, this is a good bill. I support this measure greatly, and I appreciate the Senator bringing it. Thank you. We have one other question. Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to make a motion at the proper time to do pass. Any other discussion? I hear a motion. I hear a second. All right. All in favor, say aye. All opposed, same. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I think this is a good bipartisan bill that we're letting our law enforcement and first responders know we stand behind them. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Thompson. All righty, the next bill is uh, House Bill 247. It's LC number 392721. And Chairman John Carson, go right ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me get organized here for a moment. Uh, back in 2017, many of you remember starting off the whole discussion about distracted driving. Uh, we formed a study committee. We looked at some of the uh, reasons for the increasing insurance premiums, fatalities, and so forth. In 2018, we passed the hands-free law, and I'm proud to report there should be in your pack there so, uh, some press release information about how fatalities have actually gone down from 2016 each year, 17, 18, and 19 since this house start, first started talking about distracted driving. Uh, I think that's due to our collective leadership on the issue, raising awareness, but also obviously culminating in the hands-free law that passed in 2018, and then fatalities started really going down. But in addition to the fatalities going down year over year, they, they did so despite increasing traffic and increasing population. NHTSA, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, looks at the number of fatalities per 100 million vehicle miles traveled. And there are ratios, although fatalities overall went down 4.5%, as a percentage of population and traffic went down 12% in that three-year period. Unfortunately, they're up a little bit in 2020, mostly due to speeding and so forth. I'm bringing forward House Bill 247, uh, this is kind of left over after substantial modifications from last year. All we're doing here in House Bill 247 is uh, getting rid of some language in lines 86 through 90. You can see that on the bill on page 4. 
And this is basically the waiver. This was something that was uh, negotiated uh, three years ago in order to get the bill passed. This actually, this language was drafted uh, as part of something that came out of Rhode Island. Rhode Island, as I understand it, uh, has done away with this part of their statute as well. Uh, I don't know of any other state that has this in the nation as far as a first time waiver. We ha you'll hear from several people, Mr. Chairman, I assume some people have signed up to speak on the bill. Uh, you'll hear from some people in regard to how unenforceable this is. I'm holding up a copy of an affidavit that is done in Cherokee County. Uh, the Solicitor General there was unable to attend, but he's watching the meeting here. And this affidavit is really all they have in a case management system. So if I get pulled over for distracted driving, holding my phone, that'll make good news, right? Um, if I get pulled over and I get a ticket and I go to court in Cherokee County, in part of my district, I fill out one of these, swear I won't do it again, and I go home. But if I get the same pulled over in Cobb County for the same offense, there's no way for Cobb County or City of Marietta to talk to Cherokee County or other counties or jurisdictions in regard to this issue. So just looking to get rid of this, looking to clean up some of the language in the, uh, in the bill. We're looking to keep fi the fines flat, but no increases like I had proposed a couple of years ago. We just want it simple and clean and enforceable. So I would just very much appreciate the, the committee's support. Uh, you should see some, you know, all of you know that I'm a data guy. <laughs> I put some information, I don't know if it made it around in regard to uh, the fines. You can see that some of our fines are some of the lowest in the nation. You can see in the press release that the fatalities have gone down. Uh, I think it's a, a great success story, but I think I'm here today because I think we can do more. So with that, Mr. Chairman, happy to answer questions. Right. Do we have any questions? Don't see any. We got one, one uh, to sign up to speak, Mr. Bob Dallas. We'd love to hear from you. I, I just okay. want to say thank you to this <laughs> body and this legislature for doing a great job with highway safety. You advanced Georgia, I think, to the top of the states, and uh, this is a great bill because it makes for certainty, and everybody knows that you can't get a free pass by doing exactly what Mr. Carson said. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dallas. We appreciate that. Is anyone else? Any questions? If we have a move, we have a motion. Do I have a second? All right. All in favor? All opposed? It's passed. Thank you. Are we done?